All right, let's get started. Welcome, everyone. We are here to talk about using Istio to manage multi tenant machine learning workloads. My name is Wen Chen. Li Ming is my colleague. We are both software engineers working at Google. Uh, we are working on Istio. We most specifically, we are leading the Istio security development. Uh, how many of you have heard about Istio? Great, wonderful. What about Kubeflow? Excellent. Uh, let me start with a little bit of background about Istio, and then we'll talk about Kubeflow as a case study for machine learning pipeline. So Istio is an open service platform to manage service interactions across container and VM-based workloads. There are three main challenges on service communications. Monitoring, connectivity, and security. And Istio solve all three problems for you. First, Istio provides you uniform visibility into your service communications. You get latency, request patterns, errors, all sorts of telemetry you want to know. Second, is operational agility, which is mostly about traffic management. So it still provides you advanced load balancing, traffic shifting, traffic splitting, circuit breaking to help you manage your traffic easily. And the last is used to provide the security you needed to secure your service communication, and plus declarative policy, which you can easily describe your intent. Like you can easily turn on mutual TS to enable uh, data in transit encryption plus authentication, authorization, and audit to protect your service. Let's take a look at an overview of Istio architecture. On the data plane, Istio auto inject Envoy proxy to every single service instance. And this Envoy will intercept both incoming and outgoing traffic. Combined with Istio control plane, Istio provides, Istio provides magic to secure, connect, and manage your traffic. There are three major components on Istio control plane. First, pilot is responsible for distributed policy to every uh, envoy. Gally does policy vali validation to make sure the policy is good to use. Mixer is the integration point to collect and report metrics to all different backends, like Prometheus, Grafana, whatever monitoring system or logging system, tracing system you would like to use. Citadel is a key to manage key cert, provision key cert to every single workload, and then you can establish mutual TS to, see, to secure the connection. Now let's talk about running machine learning workloads in a multi-tenant environment. Typically, a machine learning pipeline can be divided into three stages. Prepare data. You store the raw data in some persistent storage, like GCS bucket, Amazon S3, and then you ingest data to machine learning workloads that analyze, transform, and split data to the format you can, can be consumed by the second stage, like feature columns. The second stage is train your models. That include uh, select the right models, hyperparameter tuning, and model testing, and model validation. After you finish the model trainings, we move to the third stage. Then you deploy your model and serve the model as prediction service. In a multi-tenant environment, each tenant may want to have its own pipeline to run their machine learning workloads. So here comes the challenge of multi-tenancy. First, on security, you want also the isolations. Each tenant may want uh, the may, may want to provide isolation on operators. The so operator can only manage the workloads and resource for your own tenants. You don't want operator from another tenant to be able to touch your workload. Sec second, is isolation of communications. 
you only want communications within the tenant. Workload can talk to workloads within the same tenant, not across tenants. There might be some, I mean, data you don't want to expose to other tenants. And the last one is isolation with user access. So you don't want like tenant, uh, another tenant's users to access your prediction service, to access your notebook. The second one is operational agility. So after you build new models, Ethereum can help you easily test and verify uh, how good the model is. So Ethereum provide traffic splitting, traffic mirroring. After you verify it's a good model, then you can leverage Ethereum to roll out the new model safely and easily. The last one, observability. Each tenant want to have its own view of monitoring, logging, auditing, and tracing. So they can uh, take advantage of Ethereum to do troubleshooting and react quickly to provide good SLO. So here is our proposed solution, which is Istio plus <coughs> Kubernetes namespace. Each tenant has, has its own dedicated namespace. Basically, they run their workloads on their namespace. We're talking more about how Kubernetes namespace can be leveraged to do resource and workload isolation. Then Istio auto inject Envoy to each workload, along with the Istio control plane. Then Istio provides the security, traffic management, and observability you needed to manage this machine learning workload. So uh, Limi is going to talk about, I mean, how this proposal works using Kubeflow as a case study. Thank you, Martin. <coughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to do a case study on Kubeflow uh, to show you how you can use Istio to manage multi-tenant machine learning workloads. Kubeflow is a, a machine learning toolkit for Kubernetes. A Kubeflow pipeline is a platform for building, deploying, and uh, managing machine learning workflows. A typical Kubeflow pipeline includes the following steps. Uh, first, you need to create a Kubernetes cluster. Then you need to prepare the training data by deploying workloads like uh, TensorFlow Analyze, TensorFlow Transform to analyze, clean, and uh, pre-processing this uh, training data. And the next step is uh, to train your machine learning model. Um, and you can achieve that by deploying TensorFlow training jobs. And uh, the last step is uh, to serve your machine learning model and, uh, by deploying TensorFlow serving jobs. So I just use uh, TensorFlow as uh, one example. Um, Kubeflow support any machine learning frameworks. And uh, yeah, TensorFlow is just uh, one of them. In multi-tenancy scenario, each tenant's machine learning workloads are managed within a dedicated uh, Kubernetes namespace. For example, user Alice resource should always be deployed uh, in a namespace called uh, Kubeflow Alice. Kubernetes RBAC can be used to control the operator operations. For example, it can control who can deploy the machine learning workloads, who can run the machine learning workloads, and uh, who can configure the machine learning workloads. Uh, for example, like uh, set quota and uh, set uh, access control policy or set traffic policy. We can use Istio authentication authorization feature to secure and uh, isolate tenant communication. Istio provides mutual TS for transport authentication. Data is encrypted in transit. Istio provides a strong workload identity in the form of a Kubernetes service account. Each workload is assigned a cryptographically signed certificate, X59 certificate, for the identity. And Istio is responsible for key and certificate management and distribution. 
it still provides uh, end user authentication, specifically Georgia authentication for any OpenID Connect provider. Uh, for example, Google, Auth0, Facebook. And uh, it still provides identity based authorization to support service level and uh, namespace level segmentation at both the HTTP and the TCP layer. And it still support service to service and uh, end user to service authorization. Uh, Istio's authorization policy language is uh, role-based access control plus condition. So it provides uh, both uh, good usability and uh, flexibility. So uh, it's flexible because you can define custom condition using Istio attributes. Um, both Istio authentication and authorization are, uh, are enforced locally on Envoy proxy. So it has uh, high performance. So uh, now let's take a look um, at how Istio end user authentication feature can be used to uh, secure and uh, isolate user access to machine learning workloads. Uh, let's consider a scenario that an end user tries to access machine learning workloads like uh, a serving job. The end user request arrives at Istio ingress. The ingress will forward the request to a service called uh, Istio auth service. If there is no end user credential attached, the auth service will redirect the user to login with an identity provider. For example, Google login, GitHub login. <coughs> if the login is uh, successful, uh, it will return a George token, which we call request access, uh, request context token, or RC token. RC token contains all the information about the source, uh, for example, source IP and also the end user credential. RC token is uh, forwardable uh, between the workloads and uh, it is a short-lived George token and it's valid only inside the uh, Istio mesh. So it has uh, a very nice uh, security characteristics uh, because the token cannot be uh, impersonated uh, outside the mesh. Um, yeah, so RC token is validated locally by Istio proxies running in front of the machine learning workloads. And uh, after the token is validated, the user is authenticated to access the machine learning workload. Now the next step is the authorization. Uh, Istio provides authorization feature uh, that can be used to authorize both channel identity and uh, end user identity. Some typical use case include uh, uh, it can authorize a developer to access a Jupyter notebook. It can also authorize an end user to access a model serving job. Uh, I show an example of Istio authorization policy here. On the left side, we define a role called the Alice serving role. It allows you to uh, read the serving workload in CookFlow Alice namespace. So the policy says if the request comes from Istio Ingress and the uh, George email claim is alice at foo.com, you are allowed to access a serving job in Kubeflow Alice namespace. Um, you can use Istio to monitor machine learning workloads for each tenant. Istio allows you to plug in any monitoring backend such as uh, Stackdriver, Prometheus. And uh, you can define policies to configure uh, what metrics, what stats you would like to log. Um, the monitoring backends like uh, Stackdriver provide isolation between tenants. For example, you can specify the access control policy such that Alice, user Alice only sees logs and uh, metrics in Kubeflow Alice namespace. Is your traffic management feature uh, provides a lot of nice functionalities such as uh, traffic splitting, load balancing, uh, retries, failover. Uh, for example, you can configure policies such that the front-end namespace send 95% uh, of traffic to 
V1 service. And uh, the remaining 5% of traffic is sent to V2, uh, V2 workloads. And you can also do um, traffic splitting based on the request content. For example, requests, request header. You can say, if the request comes from uh, an Android device, send it to a V1, de uh, V1 workload. If the traffic comes from Apple device, send it to V2, traf uh, V2 workload. Um, so by doing so, you can achieve uh, some functionalities like automatic rollout to new versions, do A-B testing for different machine learning models, separation of a staging environment and the production environment, uh, and uh, a lot more. All these can be configured uh, through traffic policies. And uh, I just uh, show a traffic policy here. There is uh, no application changes required, and uh, there is no traffic disruption. Okay. Now I'm going to give back to uh, the mic to Wenchen to show a demo. Sorry. Thank you. All right. So next, we are going to play a short demo. Uh, it's about how Istio and Kubeflow manages multi-tenant Jupyter notebooks. So this demo is prepared by uh, Kunmin, a developer for Kubeflow. Just want to show, uh, acknowledge the uh, appreciation to him for preparing the demo. That's okay. I'm going to narrate. So uh, the first. We're going to show you that there is a centralized UI. You can try to it have manages all notebooks. Sorry, it's so fast. Let me start over. <laughs> so this one shows a centralized UI and we're trying to access a notebook from or not different users, and we're so supposed to see access denied, which is you are seeing here. So next up, the user Quimin is going to create a workspace plus profile under his own name, and that's a step to do that. After created the YAML file, deploy it, then switch the user to. Uh, your own user to your own user, and you can launch a notebook instance. Now you connect. All right, it's successful. Simple like that. And here are all the information, resources about is the community, about Kubeflow communities. If you are interested in contributing to both communities, please join us, and you are, you are, you are, you are more than welcome. Uh, that's all. Any questions? Uh, do you want to give his mic, 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 microphone? Okay. And hello, sa thanks for sharing all this. I just want to know how uh, Istio and the Kubla are, up, um, are, are running in the Google's production and uh, uh, what is the scale of uh, usage? Uh, are they all running using this or uh, how is this, is this used in production? Uh, that's a great question. So. Istio is currently uh, released 1.2. It basically means production ready. But Kubeflow is still at alpha stage. And anyone from Kubeflow team? I, so probably we have, have to wait after Kubeflow launched 1.0. Then we can show you like what's going to be the production story on, on Google. Right, this is alpha mode. So feel free to try it and give us feedback. Yeah. 
but the feature is already available. It's uh, production ready. Right. Uh, any other question? Okay. Uh, 不好意思, 我英文不太好啊, 我想问一下, 啊, 没关系, 呃, 这个 Inoi, 它, 因为它是一个Sidecar嘛 对吧 然后它会做一些缓程什么之类的但是它的网络性能真的会很好吗很适合这种机器学习这种场景 That's a great question So basic question is Envoy Sidecar and how good the performance is using Envoy is it, uh, particularly on network functionalities yeah. So depends on your use case and depends on the performance requirement of your application. So we did some performance benchmark. So Envoy performance is actually pretty good. It's very it's equivalent to Nginx, which is like uh, a high performance proxy with good reputation. The latency overhead as we tested is about 100 microsecond. And the CV cost is uh, at the same level. So if your application can tolerate the 100 microsecond overhead per hop, I think that's fine. But if you use application something like Cassandra, and each transaction is also at the microsecond level, then that's something you might need to consider in terms of overhead. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Uh, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> 专用的加速网卡嘛，说谷歌那边它是不是有，比如说用Eroy它去对接这些网卡什么之类的，啊，智能硬件加速代理什么之类的。呃，that that's also a good question. So question is, um, is it possible possible to uh provide hardware isolation to improve the performance? What does Google provide that? Uh, I think that's generally a good idea, but I don't think. I'm at a position to tell about that. <laughs> Any other question? All right, then. Thank you all for attending this session. <laughs>